Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today's lesson is going to be on how to use a fuse tool to create custom pockets for your custom cutting system in the fill and file sleeves. So it will hold the tools on the one side and you'll be able to store your templates on the back side. So let's head to the craft room and I'll show you how it's done. The goal will be to store the patterns on the front side and the templates on the back side of your fill and file sleeves. I store my sleeves inside my tool tote and it's set up so that they are sitting in the front part of the bag in which I can pull them out and use them as I see fit. I've created a box insert inside my bag which does have some flex room which allows me to store them. So my orientation of the storage of the sleeves are a little different. I'm using my fuse tool to create this. The fuse tool will come with a variety of tips but for this project, you want the binding tool, which is a round rolling ring that looks very much like a pizza cutter. So here are some important reminders when you're using your fuse tool to create pockets in your Creative Memories 12 by 12 fill and file sleeve pockets. Watch the heat of your tool if you've uh, if you are playing around a little bit and it does get too hot, you can uh, burn right through everything. Not a big, big issue, but something to watch for. Um, if you're doing things that require a lot of height, you can play back your page a little bit to give it some more volume. Also, um, don't burn yourself with the tip because it can get very hot. When you're using your tool, Remember that the pocket itself is double-sided, so if I fuse through on the top without putting a buffer in, I can melt right through to my back plastic. So whenever you're working, do if I'm working on the front, do put a sheet to keep the back one from fusing together. So I'll put a cardboard there to keep it from fusing all the way through. If I'm making my pocket only, the flaps that I need here, I just want to fuse the plastic to itself. In that case, I'm going to decide where I'm going to make my pocket. I can make my mark and I'm going to be working on a separate piece of cardboard. So I'm not fusing this plastic to the material beneath. When I'm ready to fuse the two pieces together to attach my seams and make my final pocket that's when I'll remove this one so this one was used to make the flap once it's done I'm fusing down the outside edges so things don't get caught underneath as I'm sliding out and I just have a pocket and I'm now fusing to my second material again cardboards in the back so I'm not fusing right through to the back side and that will give me my pocket as you saw from my kit, I'm storing mine up and down like so. So I'm putting them in, I'm fusing off the outside edge and creating my pocket. If you are going to use the fill and file binder to add to your set, you can do it the same way. You're just going to be having your seam on the inside. So then all my labeling, everything else will be going in this direction as I'm setting up my my sleeves and I don't have to worry about fusing that outside edge because it's already done for me. So all set, ready to go. I'll let you watch the videos as to how I did mine and if you have any other questions do let me know. I started by printing off some labels for my pattern sets so I'm snipping them down to size and I am going to place them inside my sleeve. Because I am storing my sleeves vertically, I am putting mine in the upper corner and holding it into place. Before I can fuse it down, of course, I need to add my buffering cardboard on the back side of the template so I do not fuse all the way through 
the three layers up in place. I am now going to attach using my ruler and my fuse tool a set window so this little tag does not slide around inside my casing. Here I've decided where the pockets are going to be on my page. I have my buffer piece at the bottom and I'm ready to cut the last of my position slits. My fuse tool is hot, ready to go, and we're all set. Using my ruler, I'm going to decide how wide a space I need. I'm going to go ahead and cut that with my X-Acto knife. It's not very sharp, so I'm going again with my scissors. And once my open slit is done, I'm going to make a little vertical cut about a half inch down and fold it over nice and firm. Creasing it down, once I'm all set, I'll take my tool and I'm fusing the plastic onto the plastic. I'm going to line up with my ruler to again fuse the upper edge of that flap and the lower edge to make it all nice and secure and a double thickness. Final touch up there. Once we're all set, I'm going to slide along my little casing piece that I have for my second piece of cardboard. And I'm going to go ahead and fuse all the flaps for the four patterns that I have. So again, coming along, doing the upper edge and the lower edge. Sometimes I use a ruler, sometimes I just freehand it. Again, vertical, holding it down in place. Gonna slide my pattern all the way up to the top, make sure my oval's in place, get that last bit on. I'm adjusting my lower backing cardboard so it's right up in the corner so I can again just ensure that my label tag is in place. And I'm gonna go ahead and slide the last of my upper cardboard in place to put down that last flap. Once that's removed, I can start adhering the upper plastic to the lower matting piece. So we're all set. Final corner here. Last one across the top of the flap on the vertical and the lower part again. All set. Double check. Now we're going to go ahead and just make sure everything's intact so the upper part of the plastic that was cut I now need to fuse that to the backing part so when my oval pattern slides out it does not slide underneath that upper part because I'm loading my tools from the uh, top down I have to seal off the outside edge of my page so things are going nicely. Here I'm inserting my oval and I'm going to check my spacing and go ahead and create my pocket. So at this time I am now fusing the outer plastic to the material backing down below. The outer cardboard has gone and I'm just ensuring that my lower cardboard is in place so it's not fusing right through to the all the layers. Checking my spacing again, we're going to go ahead and seal off the lower edge. My ruler is going to hold the plastic nice and firm and then I'll go ahead with my tool to create that binding seam. Just going to make sure it's not too tight and we'll go ahead and seal that. Again, where the flap is where I cut, I have to seal that down so that when I slide the tool up, it does not catch on the upper bit of the plastic. Going to go ahead and add a second layer on the side here. So it's not so much tension on the first binding seam that I made. That's looking pretty good. On to the next pattern size. Again, sealing the top part so when it slides up, it does not catch. Just checking to see if there's any friction there. 
and we'll go ahead. This oval is not as long as the other one, so I'm going to add a fuse at the bottom so its pocket's not as deep. And then we'll go ahead and do the last upper one. Same thing. I'm going to have to remove my lower pattern so I can get my ruler in there to get a nice firm surface to put the lower edge on the upper pocket. There we go. That's looking good. Now I'm going to have to do the sides so the pocket does not, the little custom template does not slide around inside the pocket. Checking the upper part, a little bit of a catch there, so I'm just going with the fuse tool and doing a little bit of quick adjustments to make sure that's all nicely fixed down. Checking everything, make sure nothing's sliding. Everything seems to be going in and out real nice. There we are. Bottom one seems a little loose on the one side. So again, with my fuse tool, I'm going to make that pocket just a little bit more narrow so everything sits in really nice and pretty. And again, a little bit of a catch, so we're just going to make sure that edge is sitting really nice. All right, last check round through. All the tools seem to be fitting really nice in the pocket, so we seem to be all set. One more time, a little bit narrow on the bottom edge. There we go, that feels pretty good. And here is my guide template. It's going to sit in the back. And everything is done.